Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning and uh, welcome back to our guest list participants and live stream audience as well for this second day of the European Theatre Forum 2020 European Performing Arts in Focus. We will start this second day with an opening speech by a special guest, which we will present shortly. Before going over then to the presentation of the study, the situation of theatres in the EU member states, which is something we have been really looking forward to in the European theatre landscape. This will take place during the first part of the morning. The second part from uh, 10 a.m. onwards will be divided into two sessions dedicated to environmental sustainability and EU cultural policies, greening the theatre and performing arts sector. And of course, uh, throughout the day, this afternoon as well, our forum platform stays open, is available for you to meet, exchange and network, just as we did yesterday during the table talks with German organizations. Don't hesitate to already set up meetings in our informal networking rooms with the other attendees using the Zoom chat, the text chat on the forum platform, or even the list of contacts you've received, you've received per email to inform people of the rooms you'll be going to. Now, this way you can make sure that you will meet all the persons you want to talk and to meet during the forum. And because we are here to talk about the future chances and possibilities in theater and performing arts, it is our pleasure to invite you to join the 10th edition of the Fast Forward European Festival for Young Stage Directors, starting this afternoon at 2.15. It is hosted by Staatsschauspiel Dresden. The pandemic has shown us all how fragile the structures on which we have built our security are, but the festival as a place for discovery, creativity and innovation with this year edition entitled At Work, invite you for four full days to immerse yourself in virtual worlds and test new perspective. As we all know, this European Theatre Forum is happening while most theatre and performing arts venues in Europe are currently closed to the audience, not even rehearsing, or some in the best case scenario only playing for very limited audience of 20 or 30 persons, like where you are, Jan, at the Théâtre de la Ville in Luxembourg. So we want to show the direct and undeniable effects of the pandemic on our sector. And because the images are stronger than words, we have prepared for you a video.
Yes. Um, I am sure most of you have been witnessing first hand, hand the, this difficult situation and the uncertainty of your latest artistic work, which for someone has been cancelled, reported, postponed, or even cancelled a second time. So these times with um, their accumulation of empty audiences ask for a lot of patience and strong nerves, and of course, glimmers of hope that the situation will get better for us, for all of us. And, um, but right now, even with those uh, strong images, we are nonetheless ex extremely honored to have uh, Maria Gabriel, European Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education, Youth and Sports, open our discussions for today. We, no, that's it. Normally. Ah, I'm told we are a bit early. This is um, unusual, normally, uh, at these points and time we're running behind the schedule, but um, we are a bit early this morning. So we'll ask everybody to be a little patient um, and the sessions will go on shortly. Okay, maybe in the meantime, we can just um, say a few words about this day, which is entitled Making Progress. After yesterday, we have stage, the stage. Today, we are trying to make in progress uh, in our discussions, in our what it is to be done. And because we have seen these images with uh, empty theaters, um, it is really for us, the artists, for the performers, um, this feeling to, um, to be homeless, having a home, um, not having the possibility to really to enter in contact with your audiences, with the people uh, to which you are, uh, you are addressing your work, this has affected us all um, very, very much. Because for us, the space, the place itself, the direct contact, the proximity, plays an extremely important and uh, decisive, decisive role. It is all, almost inimaginable for us, even though we are trying to adjust ourselves to these times to understand how, how can we still practice our profession when the bases themselves, some of the main levers uh, are canceled. So how, how is it possible for us to make our art, the invisible, visible to the audience, the soul, the spirit, the, the mind to, to touch all this um, when the, the physical presence of the audience, the space, the space itself, when this can happen, um, are missing. So we are all trying to find, to make this progress, to understand what 
and how theater as a public space, as a vector of direct transmission of emotion and ideas that are circulating between spectators and our audiences can continue to exist. This um, is the, one of the main um, objectives of this forum. And we really hope you will see in uh, this next session with um, Maria Gabriel, um, we have uh, we are we are touching and opening some very very important uh, aspects. And I think Maria Gabriel is here and um, ready to talk to us. So we'll pass it over to her. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, dear Gina. So emotional messages. Thank you for touching our hearts, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, really, thank you very much for inviting me to open this second day of the first ever theater forum, an initiative that I fully support, because I, I really, I really believe that theater is fundamental for our society, beyond entertainment. It also has a strong education purpose, provoking our thoughts, our critical thinking and our social dialogue, contributing to the changes that affect our societies. And for an audience to look at live theater is to reflect on itself, on its identity, on its society. And theater since ancient Greece has always been a key pillar for democracy. For this reason, this performing art needs to be supported and nurtured, even more so in a situation like the one we are living, where performing arts are at risk. On our side, you can count on our firm support. First, of course, we have Creative Europe program, the only instrument at European level entirely dedicated to the culture and creative sectors. You all know how much over the years Creative Europe has supported theater, which comes second only to music in terms of projects funded. It is through Creative Europe that before the summer, we published a call for tenders worth two and a half million euros to support the cross-border circulation and digital distribution of performing arts works. And I think that we have some good news the last two days after the conclusion of the negotiations between the European Parliament, the Council and the European Commission. I think that we should continue to promote together with Creative Europe program, how, how to support the sector better, because we have some good practices, but we need to innovate. I think that the live recording and streaming of the supported performances will be promoted as a complement to reach a broader audience and make touring more sustainable. And this support, allow me to, to say it immediately, will continue in the next programming period. Second, I would like to share with you that we need, we need a regular and direct dialogue with the sector. The crisis is affecting all of us. Therefore, we need to help each other to share best practices, experiences, solutions, and this first European theatre forum has a crucial role in this regard, connecting European theatres to each other. And I very much hope that the forum will become a regular tool of dialogue, exchange, improvement. And I would also like to invite you to share your views, ideas and solutions on the Creative Unite platform, a platform for and by the sector that offers a curated spaces to co-create and upload content and contribution. When we launched the platform in, 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 in May, that was just a good idea. Now we have more than 26,000 registered users and over 600 published posts. What I would like to see now is what are the main solutions that we can operationalize, that we can put on the ground with a concrete benefit for the sector and for our citizens. Third, I think that we need not only to stop to Creative Europe, not only to stop to the Creative Unite platform. We need to think how to include the fundamental role of theater in other initiatives of the European Commission. Of course, I'm thinking here spontaneously about the conference on the future of Europe. I cannot see a better way 
to get citizens involved in a wide range debate on Europe's future in the coming decade and beyond than through theatre and performing arts. My colleague, Vice President Dobravka Šuica, is responsible for the conference. I really invite you to contact her and to see how we can just make more visible your fundamental contribution. Second initiative, let's think about the new European Bauhaus. As you know, this will be a bridge between the world of science and technology and the world of culture and art. And it, it, it will also be a think and experiment space. The European Bauhaus will be rolled out in three phases, a design phase, a delivery phase and diffuse phase. And for me, theatres are places to exchange and debate. And your contribution in the first design phase will be important. As the President von der Leyen said it, if Europe is to lead the way in the twin green and digital transition, we should engage in cultural debates as well. And that's bring me to my third point, the European Green Deal. To achieve this goal, we need to engage all citizens at all levels. They should be empowered. And only theatres and culture more broadly have this power to reach everyone, turning the Green Deal into a societal and cultural project. The music sector, for instance, has already started moving along this line with the music declares emergency. And I'm very glad to hear that later today you will discuss the environmental sustainability and the greening of the performing arts. On this note, I would like to inform you that the European Parliament has approved a resolution in September on the effective measures to green Erasmus Plus, Creative Europe and the Solidar European Solidarity Corps. Let's see how we can use these recommendations and to turn them into actions. The fourth initiative I would like to raise with you is my current work with the Committee of the Regions. Let's think more and more about this. Following a meeting with its president, we decided to establish a joint action plan for the next two years, because theatres are in every one of our regions but we need to strengthen this. And I invite you really to follow this closely. It will certainly be of your interest in view of your deep local and regional routes throughout the European Union. We'll have 26 actions based on four priority areas. And of course, you know me now, culture, arts will be one of these. Let's see how we can build synergies with our regions, with the Regional Development Fund, how we can really strengthen not only the different tools for support for the sector, but how we can build a real ecosystem, a real European network. So let me now conclude on, with one quote from Oscar Wilde. I regard the theater as the greatest of all art forms the most immediate way in which a human being can share with another the sense of what it is to be a human being. Thank you very much for inspiring us every day and count on us on our firm support, not only in these difficult times, but for a resilient recovery, for innovation, and for just help the sector to thrive in these Opportunity times. That's my, my message. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your warm words, ideas and initiative. Uh, we are going uh, now further. Jan is introducing.